Greetings, everybody. Get out your King James Bible and turn to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 32. We're going to start in verse 30. Uh, I'm sorry, in verse 1. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, and John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jeremiah 32 in verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the tenth year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, which was the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar. For then the king of Babylon's army besieged Jerusalem, and Jeremiah the prophet was shut up in the court of the prison, which was in the king of Judah's house. So evidently, the king of Judah didn't like some of the things that Jeremiah was saying and put him in prison. Verse 3, For Zedekiah, king of Judah, had shut him up, saying, Wherefore dost thou prophesy, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall take it. And Zedekiah, king of Judah, shall not escape out of the hand of the Chaldeans, but shall surely be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon, and shall speak with him mouth to mouth, and his eyes shall behold his eyes. And he shall lead Zedekiah to Babylon, and there shall he be until I visit him, saith the Lord. Though ye fight with the Chaldeans, ye shall not prosper. And Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Behold, Hanamiel, the son of Shalom, thine uncle, shall come unto thee, saying, Buy thee my field that is in Anathoth, for the right of redemption is thine to buy it. So Hanamiel Mine uncle's son came to me in the court of the prison, according to the word of the Lord, and said unto me, By my field I pray thee, that is in Anathoth, which is in the country of Benjamin, for the right of inheritance is thine, and the redemption is thine, buy it for thyself. Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord. And I bought the field of Hanamiel, my uncle's son that was in Anathoth, and weighed him the money, even seventeen shekels of silver. All right, so in verse 9 it says, And I bought the field of Hanamiel, my uncle's son that was in Anathoth, and weighed him the money, even seventeen shekels of silver. I'm having a hard time finding out exactly what that is, but my guess is about two ounces of silver. Verse 10. And I subscribed the evidence and sealed it and took witness and weighed him the money in the balances. Uh, it could be... Um, it could also be about uh, nine ounces of silver. It could be. So it's between two and nine ounces of silver. And I subscribed the evidence and sealed it and took witnesses and weighed in the money and the balances. See, that's what money actually is. Do you know that a dollar is actually a weight of money? Well, it's a weight. One dollar was to be one ounce, one troy ounce of 90% silver. Now they just take little pieces of paper and write one dollar on it, but it's not. Uh, they used to have what is called silver certificates back in the day. Well, they, you know, oh, well, it's a real hassle to carry around silver dollars. So, you know, here, take these paper things. And it's a silver certificate, and you take it to the bank and hand them the paper, and they'll hand you a, do uh, a silver dollar. 
And that was their reasoning. Well, then it got to the point where they got rid of that idea and just gave you paper because you got used to carrying around the paper. Believe it or not, one ounce of gold back in the 20s was tw about $20. Yeah, believe it or not, an ounce of gold in the 1920s was $20. That's how little our paper money is worth nowadays. You need about, what, fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500 just to buy an ounce of gold? When back during the Depression, $20 was a an ounce of gold? Yeah. So, I mean, really, think about it. Our money is almost worthless now. There's just printing money, printing money, printing money, like it's monopoly money. It is monopoly money. We just don't know it yet. But when the whole shebang collapses, they'll be happy to uh, put everything on probably a chip and put it in your right hand or in your forehead and, you know, hey, we're going to this new digital currency. It's clean it doesn't spread diseases like uh, this epidemic going around, right? Oh, yeah. You know, we had silver coins up until 1964. We had gold coins until 1934 in the United States. Yeah, if you had, if you had $20 in your pocket, you had a gold coin. Well, they had $20 gold coins. And have you ever heard of a, a pound in England? A pound sterling? You know what a pound sterling was? It was 12 troy ounces of sterling silver. And as I understand it, sterling silver is pure silver. So that's about what? 12 ounces of pure silver? A pound was worth a lot of money. But now they're as bad as we are. Yeah. So. Uh, just a little history there in your Jeremiah. So. So he bought the field. And uh, weighed the money. 17 shekels of silver. Weighed the money. A weight. Not a piece of paper. With a number on it. That's not money. It's actually counterfeit, but verse 10, and I subscribed the evidence and sealed it and took witnesses and weighed him the money and the balances. So I took the evidence of the purchase, both that which was sealed according to the law and custom and that which was open. And I gave the evidence of the pur purchase unto Baruch, the son of Neriah, the son of Masalah, in the sight of Hanamiel, mine uncle's son, and in the presence of the witnesses that subscribed the book of the purchase before all the Jews that sat in the court of the prison. Uh, Baruch was his uh, Jeremiah's scribe. His, uh, I guess you could say like a secretary. secretary. Verse 13. And I charged Baruch before them, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Take these evidences, the evidence of the purchase, both which is sealed and this evidence which is open, and put them in an earthen vessel that they may continue many days. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. Now, when I had delivered the evidence of the purchase unto Baruch, the son of Neriah, I prayed unto the Lord, saying, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands, and recompensest 
the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty God, the Lord of hosts, is his name. Great in counsel and mighty in work. For thine eyes are open upon all the ways of the sons of men to give everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Which has set signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, even unto this day, and in Israel, and among other men, and has made thee a name as at this day. And has brought forth thy people Israel out of the land of Egypt with signs and with wonders and with a strong hand and with a stretched out arm and with great terror. You know, to the Egyptians who had made slaves out of the Hebrews and who had commanded that the first, uh, all the male children of the Hebrews be cast into the river to die. The Lord of the Hebrews was a great terror to the Egyptians. Verse 22. And has given them this land, which thou didst swear to their fathers to give them, a land flowing with milk and honey. And they came in and possessed it. But, oh, there's always that but. You know, when there's a but, there's uh, always goats. That's the thing. You know, goats, but. That's what they do. But. And they came in and possessed it, but they obeyed not thy voice. They didn't listen. Neither walked in thy law. They have done nothing of all that thou commandest them to do. Therefore thou hast caused all this evil to come upon them. Behold the mounts. They are come unto the city to take it, and the city is given into the hand of the Chaldeans that fight against it because of the sword and of the famine and of the pestilence. And what thou hast spoken is come to pass, and behold, thou seest it. And thou hast said unto me, O Lord God, buy thee the field for money, and take witness, for the city is given into the hand of the Chaldeans. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, verse 27, listen to this, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And the answer is no. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will give this city into the hand of the Chaldeans, and into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall take it. And the Chaldeans that fight against the city shall come and set fire on the city and burn it with the houses upon whose roofs they have offered incense unto Baal, the devil, unto Baal, and poured out drink offerings unto other gods to provoke me to anger. Oh boy. Verse 30, For the children of Israel and the children of Judah have only done evil before me from their youth. For the children of Israel have only provoked me to anger with the work of their hands, saith the Lord. For this city hath been to me as a provocation of mine anger and of my fury from the day that they built it, even unto this day, 
that I should remove it from before my face. I guess that's uh, the Bob translation would be, um, I'm tired of this evil. I'm sick of looking at it. Something along that line, I guess. Verse 32, because of all the evil of the children of Israel and of the children of Judah, which they have done to provoke me to anger, they, their kings, their princes, their priests, and their prophets, and the men of Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and they have turned unto me the back, and not the face. Uh, in modern language, that would be, uh, they turned their back on me, basically. And they have turned unto me the back, and not the face. Though I taught them, rising up early and teaching them, yet they have not hearkened to receive instruction. But they have set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name, to defile it. Can you imagine that? In God's house, they set up abominations, things that God hates. Verse 35, and they built the high places of Baal, Satanism, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Molech. So they were burning their children alive, human sacrifice to the devil. Can you imagine that? I wonder if Planned Parenthood is doing, uh, never mind. And they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Molech, which I commanded them not. Neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. Now therefore, thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning this city, wherefore ye say, it shall be delivered into the hand of the king of Nebuchadnezzar by the sword, and by the famine, and by the pestilence. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries, whither I have driven them in mine anger, and in my fury, and in my great wrath. And I will bring them again unto this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. Huh. Let's read that again. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. And I will give them one heart, and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. Yea, I will rejoice over them to do them good, and I will plant them in this land assuredly with my whole heart and with my whole soul. For thus saith the Lord, like as I have brought all this great evil upon this people, so will I bring upon them all the good that I have promised them. And fields shall be bought in this land, whereof ye say, It is desolate, without man or beast. It is given into the hand of the Chaldeans. Men shall buy fields for money, and subscribe evidences, and seal them, and take witnesses in the land of Benjamin, and in the places about Jerusalem, and in the cities of Judah, and in the cities of the mountains, and in the cities of the valleys, and in the cities of the south. For I will cause their captivity to return, saith the Lord. 
So there will be a time of reconciliation where the Lord will restore his people. And I absolutely believe that. Well, that's the end of chapter 32 of the book of Jeremiah. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.